On today's edition of Locked On Cougars, we're staying in the trenches. We're talking both offensive and defensive line as you take a look at the offensive guard positions on offense and the defensive tackle positions on defense. Some standout players, some guys with things to prove. We've got all that and more ahead on today's edition of Locked On Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We always appreciate you guys checking out the show. Our goal around here is to make you guys the smartest BYU fans in the room by making sure that you check out the show every single day. So that way, when you're talking with your fellow family and friends who happen to be Cougar fans or even fans of other teams, like, holy smokes, how does this person know so much about BYU? Well, you got Locked On Cougars in your back pocket, both figuratively and literally, because you can listen to this podcast anywhere. We are available wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. Also available on YouTube. If I can uh, point the right way, there we go. Yeah, point down to this corner right here. Subscribe to the show. Click for new podcasts. Comment on our shows. Leave us uh, ratings and reviews if you're listening to us in the regular audio format. You guys are absolutely the engine that makes this venture go. So thank you so much for your support. And you can hear that paper rattling um it's my handy dandy little um prospectus that byu gave out at byu media day we're be doing some uh depth chart looks today and we're talking both byu offensive line in particular the offensive guard positions as well as byu's defensive line at the defensive tackle spots let's start off on defense because an interesting uh, tidbit came out on twitter last night via byu defensive tackle lorenzo fawatea obviously a fan favorite guy who's got just an effervescent personality uh zoe took to twitter last night saying a, a year ago today I had back surgery and went into the season prematurely before letting my back heal. I played a couple of games off adrenaline and painkillers before my back couldn't hold it no more. Finally, I can say I had a healthy offseason this year. Let's go, 55, hashtag fall camp 2K22. He adds this also, coming off an injury in the previous year, 2020, it was hard for me to face the fact that I had another injury during the offseason of 2021. I tried to fight it the whole summer training, but eventually the pain was so bad, sitting down to eat a meal was painful. I had several, several excuse me, epidural injections to help with the pain, but even that was not working. I chose a surgery option where I was able to regain rehab and training at two months. I did the surgery and walked out the same day physically. I was exhausted, but mentally, I was at my lowest. Shout out to my amazing wife, Chestina, and family for pushing me not to give up and motivating me to get back out on the field. Shout out to everyone else who pushed me, as well as my boys from home. Love y'all always. Special shout out to Dr. Skyler Maine for getting me right this year. Proud of you, Zoe. We up. Now, I said also one last shout out to the best chiropractor to help me get back to normal. That was Vista Spine Care. So giving all kinds of shout outs. But the biggest thing for Zoe is he's a guy that came to BYU from Hunter High School and had a lot of people hoping that he was going to be the next great BYU defensive lineman. He has had his moments in BYU's uh, run over the last four or five years. I can think of that USC game uh, that BYU upset the Trojans in Provo in 2019, I believe. He had some big sacks in that game. He has had his moments where he's been his absolute dominant uh, force that BYU hoped he was going to be coming out of the high school ranks. But the last two seasons very much have been marred by injury for Zoe. And the hope is that he can have a healthy senior season this year. So I've got my little depth chart here and let's talk about the defensive tackle positions because Zoe currently is listed at the tackle position as the backup behind Gabe Summers. Now Gabe Summers is a former walk-on who has been absolutely phenomenal when given reps for BYU the past two years. Summers listed at six foot two, 295 pounds as a redshirt junior. Zoe at six 6'4", 300 pounds as a redshirt senior as his backup. Those two as a tandem are actually very good together, I think, and they will be very complementary to one another at that tackle position, which is a position usually you're playing the... and. I know when I use the term three or four or even a five technique, you're probably wondering what in the world does that mean, Jake? For example, a three technique means if you are a defensive lineman facing an offensive line, you are going to be off the inside shoulder of the offensive guard, essentially shaded in towards that center. If that makes sense. The three technique is there. The four tech, excuse me, I apologize. 
Three technique is head up on the center. I apologize for that. Uh, the three technique is head up on the center. Four technique is on the outside shoulder of the guard, so headed towards the tackle. Man, I can't even get it out, get it straight in my own mind. And then the five technique is out, heads up on the offensive tackle. Now, that is what the defensive tackle position at BYU has played uh, mainly during Kalani Sitake's tenure. Can they move inside and play with what they call the two technique where, or the one technique where you're inside that guard almost heads up on the center? Well, that's where the nose tackle checks in. Nose tackles for BYU currently the top two guys listed, uh, actually three. Caden Haas is listed as the starter for BYU at six foot two, 320 pounds. Uh, Caden is just an absolute bowling ball of a human being. He packs on a ton of weight and a ton of muscle onto a pretty slight frame. I know slide frame a pretty small frame relative to other defensive linemen but guys behind him josh larson at six foot four 300 pounds and then atunai samahe at six foot one 310 pounds give byu a ton of beef at that nose tackle position the nose either plays heads up on the center traditionally or just off of their shoulder between the guard and the center there. And I think BYU's biggest thing for their defensive tackle position this year is there is a lot more beef in the middle of this defensive line. If anything else that you want to see from BYU this year, they will not be as small as they were a year ago along that defensive line. I remember looking at the depth chart last year and I was seeing 295 and maybe the biggest. I think they had Caden Hawes like 300 pounds last year. There was not a lot of big bodies on BYU's defensive line. The depth chart itself right now reveals that these guys have packed on some serious weight because I'm seeing one, two, three, four guys listed at 300 pounds or more. The other guys on this uh, roster with the backups include Alema Pilimai at 270 pounds, and he's continuing to gain weight. I believe he actually told somebody he's up to 280 pounds. Hunter Greer is a guy that BYU hopes to pack some weight on a walk-on from Tippinogos High School up in Orem. He's listed at 262 pounds as the fourth string at defensive tackle. Then you also have Joshua Singh, who is a six foot, 275 pound bowling ball in his own right. He's not six foot folks. He's maybe five foot 10. He played at Orem high school and I had a chance to watch Josh play. He is lightning quick. He has incredible hands. He lists him at 275 pounds as a red shirt freshman. So across the eight guys listed on BYU's depth chart at defensive tackle alone, I am seeing a lot of guys with just bigger numbers next to their name in terms of their overall weight. And that will lend itself to helping BYU BYU out, at least in the regard of being able to hold up a little bit better against bigger offensive lines. That was something BYU's defensive line, they had a struggle holding up against elite offensive line play a year ago. Now, some other guys who might factor in coming training camp are some names that you're probably wondering about. Bruce Mitchell is a former 2A star at South Summit High School up in Camas, Utah. They list him at six foot four, 295 pounds, helped uh, win uh, back-to-back state titles for South Summit during his prep days. He's back off of a mission. He delayed his enrollment until a spring and he's been working out with BYU since spring ball. Can he make a move up the depth chart? There's the hope that he can do that. Uh, there is another guy on this roster, if I uh, have it up in front of me here. Okay, there, Isaiah Perez, another freshman coming back off a of mission. He is the nephew of former BYU tight end Carlos Nuno. He is a little bit skinnier right now coming home off his mission. Six foot three, 265 pounds. But... I am of the expectation that Isaiah Perez, given another season here, probably red shirting this coming season, he's probably going to top out around 300 pounds. I think he could be a very good defensive tackle prospect for BYU. And that's not to say anything of a guy like Isaiah Moa potentially down the road. Moa is probably going to play defensive end this year for BYU, listed at 245 pounds. We've talked about him in our defensive end uh, preview. But if his frame allows it and he continues to gain weight, I could see him him ending up on the interior as a defensive tackle for BYU. So the, the good news is if you're just looking at the BYU defensive tackle position is there are a number of bodies to throw out there on the field at opposing teams. The bigger question will be, how, will they have improved play? Can guys like Caden Haas, Nice Mahe, Lorenzo Fawatea, Gabe Summers, those four in particular, they have a lot of game experience. I believe all four of those guys have at least two years of game experience under their belts now at BYU. And some of that has been cut short due to injury for guys like Zoe, Mahe, uh, Caden Haas has had his own injury concerns. The hope is that those guys, should they stay healthy and with the extra seasoning that they have had so far in a BYU uniform, that they will be an improved unit simply due to the fact that they have more experience. Will that answer all of the questions BYU had with regards to their inability to stop opposing rush tax? No. That will not answer the questions alone. But the hope is, as BYU continues to just improve and show better uh, 
with the guys having more game experience under their belt, and then with this added weight and strength in theory that they added into the offseason, the hope is that they will get out there and show a little bit better. Now, there is a huge question mark revolving around Brooks Miley. I don't have 100% certainty on this. I don't know if he was left off the roster for a reason for BYU because he is a prep star from Pineview High School in St. George, Utah. A true 300-pounder coming off of his mission. Just a huge body. We saw him uh, doing some BYU sports camps over the summer. So he is involved with the program. I At least uh, he was this summer. I don't know why he is not listed on the roster currently because he was a guy alongside Josh Larson and Bruce Mitchell that I felt like th that trio of players coming into BYU this year would make a move up the depth chart because they were all three guys that I really thought had an opportunity to show something. Now, if it's just Bruce Mitchell and Josh Larson of, the, of that duo, Josh Larson is the dark horse here to become a true star for BYU in the middle of that defense. Everything I've heard about Larson is he is just strong as an ox. He's listed at six foot four, 300 pounds now. He came to BYU weighing about 250 pounds, was still just an absolute freak in the weight room, but now he's packed on, what, 50 pounds or so? If he is as good as the weight room numbers and what I've heard about him as it, as he, as it, as it suggests he might be, he might end up being the next star defensive tackle to come out of BYU. I'm serious about this, folks. So keep an eye on Josh Larson. They have him listed wearing the number 57 on this year's roster. A lot of intrigue with this young man, and we'll see what happens. But I, I'm still not 100% convinced that all of the woes that BYU had along their defensive front a year ago are going to be answered right away. This training camp, uh, we're a week away, under a week away from BYU training camp kicking off. But I'm not convinced all of the answers will come this season for the defensive line. But the biggest thing is you cannot be the Swiss cheese that was BYU's defensive line down the stretch last year. You have to be more resistant to a, a potent rushing attack against you. You have to make more tackles, be able to get into the backfield, disrupt plays, get your hands up, deflect footballs. You need to be a better unit overall. And the hope is with the two years plus that the lead guys at this position have under their belts now, that they will finally start to step in and really say, okay, we can assert ourselves at this point. You would have hoped they would have been able to assert themselves earlier, but no time like the present for that to happen for BYU's defensive tackles. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we'll continue on with our position group previews, flipping over to the offensive line, the offensive guard positions, led by a preseason All-American in Clark Barrington. Who else will be flanking him at right guard and also behind him should the unthinkable happen to that young man? We got all that coming up here in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. If you have not tried the Built Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's great joys. And guess what? There's a brand new flavor, my friends. I've had a chance to try it. It's it's cookie dough. If you like cookie dough ice cream, folks, this is the next best thing to it. And the best part is it's far healthier than cookie dough ice cream. I can promise you that. Uh, cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. The best part is they're only 160 calories and they pack in 15 grams of protein in them. It's absolutely insane. I had a chance to try them out and I, I, I love them, folks. They're tasty. I'm not a huge fan of of the built puffs across the board, but the cookie dough chunk, I would eat that again in a heartbeat. So get to built.com like I'm going to and snag a box for yourself and the family. It'll be a perfect treat, or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourselves. Give them a shot. Once again, that's built.com is where you can place the order now. While you're there, use the promo code LOCK15 to save 15% on your order. That's L O C K E D 15 for 15% off your order. Get, get the cookie dough chunk or get any of your favorites from our friends at built.com. The best part is you're also supporting BYU football via their name, image, and likeness agreement when you support our friends at Built Bar. So get on it, folks. Once again, that's built.com, promo code BLOCK15. Get and join the best tasting protein bars and do it with our friends at Built Bar. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. I'm wearing the hat. I called the Lavelle here on today's show. And I, I, the funny thing is actually somebody asked me, Jake, why are you wearing so many BYU hats? Well, I'm doing a BYU podcast. I've got all these hats. You can see them up on my wall here if you're watching on YouTube. I like to wear them. I don't get a chance to wear them a lot in my day-to-day -day life. I, I've kind of gone away from wearing a lot of hats, it feels like. But 
I have a chance to wear them. I'm going to don them. And also, a Provo Cougar fan on YouTube commented on my beard here. Uh, some of you watching this on YouTube have probably noticed it. Uh, he asked me, "Are why why the homeless look?" And I was like, "I don't know. I think I take offense to the oh homeless assertion." But he said, "You growing a Pioneer Day beard?" And I'm like, yeah, "Sure, we'll go with that." Because it was Pioneer Day here in the state of Utah uh, earlier this week. More over Cougar uh, Provo Cougar fan. It's just the fact that I went on vacation with my wife I, at the beginning of the month. I uh, didn't shave the whole time I was down there in California, got home. Uh, my wife was like, kind of like you with some scruffs. Let it grow for a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, at some point here, it's going to just drive me insane and I will shave it off. So randomly, one of these days, you may pop up and watch the show and I'm clean shaven once again. It's just because I decided it was finally time. I've, I've, I've almost got a month now. I'm not as adept at growing beards as some of y'all out there, but it's fun all the same. It's fun to switch it up every so often. So not going for a homeless look, just decided, you know what? It's more laziness than anything else, if, if we're being frank. All right, enough of that. Time to talk some BYU offensive line. Uh, we've talked about the centers. We did that last week, talking about Connor Pay, but we need to talk about the guys next to him on either the left or the right. Those are the guard positions for BYU. At left guard, we all know about Clark Barrington. I've been talking about him the past couple of weeks with all the preseason All-American citations he has garnered. I believe he's up to five, maybe six preseason All-American citations. He is going to be an absolute stud for BYU for the fifth year running, it feels like. He has just been a stalwart at that left guard position since returning home from his mission. Uh, he is a guy that I expect will be an NFL player this time next year. I don't necessarily know that he gets drafted uh, much higher than the middle rounds of the NFL draft due to a combination of age because he has served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the fact that he's maybe not the most athletic offensive lineman, but the one thing that Clark Barrington will always have over anybody else who lines up across from him is just this tenacious, innate want and will to win. He is the guy that if you're in a dark alley and need somebody to back you up, I'd have Clark Barrington behind me. Not only because he's listed at 300 pounds and he's just ch chiseled, it feels like, the biggest thing is, though, he's the guy that in the proverbial phone book that is playing defensive line, uh, playing offensive guard against a defensive lineman, you've got about a three foot by three foot square that you have to win on any given down. And that's what Clark Barrington relishes in doing. He plays the game with a nastiness that not a lot of offensive linemen uh, have just in their back pocket. It's just something he's always had since coming to BYU. And that's what I love about Clark. I've got my depth chart once again here. So uh, Clark at uh, left guard is obviously just lost in as a starter. His backup currently listed is Tyler Little. And if Tyler Little emerges this season as an offensive lineman for BYU, what a story that is. This is a guy who served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, was playing basketball at a JUCO in California. The football coaches kind of saw what he was doing. Uh, if, I, if I got the story right, he decided to make the transition to playing football and started playing for his JUCO program and showed enough promise that BYU said, hey, come on down. We'll, we'll take you in and see if we can develop you. They list him currently at six foot seven 285 pounds six foot seven is very tall for an offensive guard but it's not uh, a thing that you it's not about height at guard it's more about your ability to win in a confined space at a tackle position which we'll talk about here uh, probably on tomorrow's show we'll talk about guys like Blake Freeland they've got a, as big as maybe a 10 yard uh, circle to work in against defensive ends and outside linebackers as an offensive guard you have got a tackle on the outside of you you've got a center inside of you you've really got about a five foot square circle that you're working within and you have to win one-on-one -on -one battles a lot of time. And you're working sometimes in tandem with a tackle or a guard on a double team, but you have to win in a confined space. And a guy like Tyler Little, if he continues to emerge, that could be very promising because to see him listed as the backup, the lone backup at left guard, it uh, means to me that BYU coaches see something in this young man. And like I said, a former basketball player who has gained probably 40 or 50 pounds since making the transition to football and probably hasn't even topped out at what he'll play at at the collegiate level. There's a lot of intrigue there. Six foot seven, 285 pounds. As I mentioned, Clark Barrington at 6'5, 302 pounds. So there's some nice beef at the left guard position. Now at right guard is where there's going to be, I think, a nice position battle during fall camp for BYU. We talked last week when we talked about the center position that Joe Tukawafu could end up as BYU starting center if Connor Pace slips at all, or if Joe just proves he's the better option at center and it just creates the best combo of offensive linemen for BYU. Now, Joe Tukawafu is currently listed with an or next to his name at right 
right guard with Campbell Barrington, yes, the younger brother of Clark Barrington, as the co-starter there at right guard. Uh, Campbell Barrington came in last year and Harris Lachance got injured, put together a pre, uh, not a preseason, a freshman All-American campaign, and is a very, very promising player. I can tell you this because I don't think I'm uh, breaking any uh, stories now that weren't out there or haven't been out there. But I can tell you this much. When Clark Barrington was being recruited to BYU, the thought was that BYU was trying to get Clark to get to Campbell because Campbell was thought of as the more highly uh, sought after prospect. He lists him at six foot six, 295 pounds. So he's got some of the height that his brother doesn't have. Maybe not as thick as Clark is right now, but Campbell is only a sophomore for BYU, whereas Clark is a redshirt junior with it potentially another year to play for BYU if he were to elect that. I don't think he will. But Campbell Barrington is a very, very good football football player. If Campbell is a guy that you simply cannot keep off the football field, that's where the conversation comes in about moving Joe Tukuafu over to the center position just to get the best five offensive linemen on the field. The good news is for BYU along their offensive and defense uh, along their offensive line in particular is as I have talked about previously, they go at least 10 deep for BYU. That is the talent base that BYU is working with. And the nice part is if any of these offensive tackles that BYU has on the offensive line aren't necessarily uh, standing out of tackle or they need some extra seasoning, you can move them inside the guard and let them get their work there. That is the positive for BYU. I believe at the guard positions for BYU, you've got a three-headed monster of starting caliber guys. Those include Clark Barrington and Campbell Barrington and Joe Tukuafu. But that's to say nothing of a guy potentially coming up like a Kingsley Suomataia. We're going to talk about Kingsley when we talk about the offensive tackles because that's where BYU lists him on the depth chart. But if Kingsley, if a guy like Harris Lachance and Blake Freeland are guys you simply feel like you can't move out of those tackle positions for BYU or Campbell Barrington shows better at right tackle than he does at right guard or heaven forbid at Braden Kime, who we'll also talk about at guard, uh, at tackle, excuse me, is is standing out there. You could kick Kingsley Sumataia into the guard and take advantage of his just his natural physical play. That's what Kingsley brings to the table. He's got tackle type uh, skill in terms of his ability to bend and absolutely just uh, thrive out there in space as an offensive tackle, but he has an innate nastiness similar to Clark Barrington that shows up on his film. And the hope is maybe if you moved him into guard for a year or two, that he could really show something at that spot. Kingsley is listed at six foot six, 330 pounds. There is no physical development needed from this young man. He is as physically put together an offensive lineman that you will find that's a redshirt freshman in this entire country. So, is somebody like a Kingsley going to be slated to maybe move inside and upend what we already think is a very strong guard contingent for BYU? Only time will tell. Other guys that you can keep an eye on at the guard position, they're probably a year or so out in terms of really competing for playing time, include the likes of Donovan Hanna, six foot four, 300 pound redshirt freshman, uh, played in one game a year ago, a former tight end who gained a bunch of weight on his mission, just kind of grew into his frame. And BYU said, you know what? We're going to move you to offensive line. He's got to keep an eye on, as is some of the guys coming into the program. Vai Soifua, a six foot four, 290 pound freshman. You have Sony Moccasini uh, from Timview High School, six foot three, 335 pounds. He is just an absolute bowling ball in his own right. Peter Falanico, six foot three, 315 pounds at Pineview High School. And also Sione Becoso. Now, I probably should have mentioned Vecoso a little earlier on. Vecoso is 6'7", 325 pounds, a freshman from Arizona State, a transfer from the Sun Devils. He is a guy who prepped in Hawaii, uh, went to ASU, has served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and is now at BYU as a 6'7", freshman. And at listed at 325 pounds, he screams a guy that can play tackle. But similar to the conversation we had about Kingsley Suomataia, could a guy like Siona Vecoso, if he's a guy that you feel like, okay, we need to get him on the field. Could you kick him inside the guard and let him develop there before moving him back out to tackle? That happens all the time at elite programs like Ohio State, Alabama. Some of their future stars at tackle actually spend maybe their first or second year in the program seasoning up at guard before moving out to tackle. It's a great way to get talent on the field, while at the same time, you're not worried about them giving up a blindside sack at the left tackle position and saying, oh, well, that was the abject failure. You give them the time to develop at their own pace. What I love about BYU's guard positions is they're well-stocked. Like I said, a preseason All-American in Clark Barrington. You got Joe Tukuaf, who is a multi-year starter there. You have a freshman All-American in Campbell Barrington. And who knows who else might emerge at that guard spot. 
What I love about BYU's offensive line is the depth and the talent of it. They are set up for success this season, and they are set up for success moving into the Big 12. The offensive line for BYU might be their chief strength going into Big 12 play in 2023 offensively. I'm serious about this take, folks. And the funny thing about it is they could lose as many as four guys off this year's offensive line as they go in to the Big 12. Think about that. When I say that could be one of their chief strengths, that shows you the depth and breadth of the talent for BYU. And what I love is the guard position sure looks like it's set up for success right now, similar to the rest of the offensive line, and set up for success moving forward long-term as well. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we'll finish out today's show by saying farewell to one of the BYU super fans, guy who has a unique connection to the BYU football program. We'll get to that here in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends at Intercap Lending. There's a reason that no lender in the state of Utah is helping more families here with their mortgage needs on our friends at Intercap Lending. And that reason, simply stated, Intercap gets deals done. Right now, we all know that interest rates are going up. The Fed is continuing to raise them. If you still want to take advantage, whether it's for a new home build, a new uh, buy, you're trying to refinance, you want to cash out a little bit before uh, you think something's going to happen, Intercap Lending is there to help you guys out. So they feature a quick and simple process. They're closing loans two weeks faster than the industry average. And although fast is great, obviously, the ultimate goal is to create a stress-free home loan process for you, the buyer. We all know that have been through the home buying process, how stressful it can be. Well, Steve Carter is locked on's personal loan officer at Intercap Lending, and he'd love nothing more than to take all that stress off your shoulders and help you guys through this process. You can reach out to him anytime you want. He's got a direct line he's given us. His direct number, 385-800-8528. That is 385-800-8528. If you'd like to reach out to him via email, you can do that as well. It's scarter at intercaplending.com. Or you can email us, lockedonbyu at gmail.com. We'd be happy to set up an arrangement, a broker, a meeting for you guys to meet with Steve. He is absolutely phenomenal. He's been helping hundreds of Locked On listeners and has done so since 2018. The best part is uh, the Locked On Cougars podcast can get you a corporate rate discount from our friends at Intercap Lending. All you got to do is mention Locked On Cougars and Jay Catch when you reach out to Intercap Lending. So once again, it's Intercap Lending. They've got 44 years of experience behind them. They'd love nothing more than to earn your business. Reach out to Steve Carter, anytime you need him, 385-800-8528. Even as simple as just having a question about what rates are that day. He's happy to help out with as simple as a question as that. Or if you're just trying to find a new broker to get your mortgage taken care of, he'd love nothing more than to help you guys out. That's Intercap Lending. Once again, go to online to learn more about them. That's intercaplending.com. Intercap Lending, NMLS number 190465. Intercap Lending is an equal housing lender. Before we go on today's show, just wanted to say, uh, Thank you, and uh, our our condolences go out to the Christensen family. Many of you know who Todd Christensen is. He is a BYU legend, a guy who went on to win Super Bowls with the Oakland Raiders. Well, his son, Taron Christensen, many of you probably have seen his uh, work, whether it was on Facebook or on Instagram or on Twitter, he passed away recently. And uh, it was a really sad story because Taryn was a guy that I, I interacted with him briefly. I didn't have, I can't say that I had a really close per- relationship with Taryn, but what he exuded was just faith promoting uh, positivity. That, that's probably the easiest way I can say it. And that's what I loved about Taryn in his social media presence. Uh, gone too soon. He's actually the same age as me. He was born in 1987. I was born in 87. So we were around the same age, but he was a guy who dealt with all kinds of physical issues throughout his life. I had spina bifida as a, as a young child, uh, it affected his life the rest of the way. He was confined to a wheelchair from the age of 12. Uh, but he never let that hold him back. Uh, I saw videos of him driving a car. He was a weightlifting machine. Just, he was everything that, you wanted a person to be. And that's what I loved about Taryn. I, like I said, I didn't have that close of a relationship to Taryn. I knew his brother Toby fairly well. I had some interactions with Todd uh, before he passed away in 2013. I always loved Todd as a broadcaster because just his uh, extensive vocabulary. Uh, but the Christensen family, will you please keep them in your prayers, your thoughts, just send all of the, the love you can to the Christensen family at this time. It's never easy to lose a loved one, especially uh, a BYU family like Taryn. He was a guy that was a BYU Cougar through and through. He was a, a Raider fan as well, obviously via his father, who was a standout for the Raiders for many, many years. But uh, the thing about this is we never uh, want to lose great fans, the likes of Taryn Christensen. So let me just send a, a simply stated, uh, uh, 
a heartfelt, uh, we love you to the Christensen family, to Toby, to his entire family out there. We want you guys to know the Locked On Cougars podcast from my family, from the Hatch family, and from just all Cougar fans. We love you. We're thinking of you. And I want to say until we meet again, Taryn, it just gone too soon. That's, it, I don't know. Words don't do justice in, in situations like this, but I felt like I still needed to give, give a shout out to the Christensen family. Um, if you'd like to uh, reach out to them, th they posted on social media. There will be a funeral later this week, I believe is this Saturday uh, in Alpine. But uh, like I said, just our, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Christensen family at this time. All right. On that somber note, we will call it a day here on Locked On Cougars. Coming up on tomorrow's show, we continue on with our position group previews, getting you ready for BYU training camp opening up next week. Uh, we are going to take a look at the offensive tackle positions. We also got to talk about the linebacker posi positions for BYU as well. Any other BYU news that comes between now and then, we'll have that covered for you guys as well. It's still talking season with uh, conference uh, media days going on. It is watch list season with awards announcing their watch list. BYU players getting added to those seemingly daily so we got a lot more still to cover but a big thank you once again for your support of the podcast as always until tomorrow have a great rest of your day this has been the locked on cougars podcast see you